is Jesus God? Well, I think it's pretty clear. As a matter of fact, I think it's mandatory to believe so. However, there are people that are just not going to accept it. And how does the old saying go? A man convinced his will is still not convinced. And so this particular video is not for people who are still fighting. This is for people who believe that Jesus is God and would just like further validation of it. In, in Greek, there are rules, just like in English, just like in Spanish, in any other language, there are rules to the grammar. And so there's one particular rule that we need to look at that also helps to prove to solidify that Jesus is God. This rule is called the Granville Sharp Rule. Maybe you've heard about it. Uh, maybe you have not. But who Granville Sharp is, he lived during the time of slavery uh, in the late 1700s, early 1800s. He was an abolitionist. But what he is most known for is this particular rule. He is believed to be self-studied or self-taught. And in his self-studies, one of the things that he discovered was this particular rule. Now, there are other elements of the rule that probably aren't true, but there's one particular element of this rule that is true. So before I go to that, let's go ahead, just kind of give a, a brief synopsis of this rule. And let me just put it on the screen so you all can read. What it really is, the rule is, is, is as follows. Uh, when the copulative chi, that is in the English, the word and, connects two nouns of the same case. Either the substantive, now the substantive can be a noun or something that kind of operates in place of a noun. It can be an adjective or a participle. And so when you have two nouns separated by and, it will refer to the same thing. If the substantive are both singular, meaning it's personal, not relating to a thing, and also it's not a proper name. So just, just having that understanding, this seems to work 100% of the time. Now, I have not come across any examples where there are not, although there are some debated texts where people might have debate whether this is a proper noun or not. But if it's just, but if it's understood that this is a, a noun that's not proper or a substantive that is not a proper name, that it's singular uh, and that it's personal, well, then this rule follows 100% of the time. So let me give a couple of examples that I think are pretty easy and no one's going to really debate these issues. And that is one in Romans 15, 6, so that with one accord, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we understand that the God and Father, that is relating to the same person. Now, this rule, this Granville Sharp rule is in place. So let's go over to it. Here we have uh, God. Theon. And so we have the rule where Theon is the substantive. Here's a chi and then patera, which is also a substantive. So we have two nouns. Both of these are singular, separated by the chi. And so here we've got an example of Granville Sharp's rule, where both of these nouns refer to the same person. So God and Father, that is the same person. So that's one example. And it's not too controversial. No one's going to disagree with that. Let's give another example. In, in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. So here we've got, let's go over here to the Greek, doulos, which is the first substantive, separated with the chi next and apostolos. So we have this word, both of them are the same gender, apostolos and doulos, both are singular, they're both personal, and they're not a proper name. So we understand it without much debate that Peter is a apostle as well as a bond servant. Referring to the same person, Peter the bond servant, Peter the apostle, same thing. That's an example where there's not very much controversy to it. However, there are examples where there is some controversy. How about Titus 2.13? Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior. Now, this is where the controversy will come in for those who do not want to accept that Jesus is God. And so here we have Feu. And so teras, both of these are substantives separated by the chi. Both of these substantives, both of these nouns are one, singular, both personal. Both of these also neither are a proper name. And so they both fit the definition. And so what does this state? And this is why it can be controversial for those who don't believe that Jesus is God, that literally God and Savior is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the great God and Savior. But if we who understand this can look at this, we see one proof by the grammar uh, and it gives us an idea as to who is the one that's working in us and who has died for us. 
Now, if we go back to that same example in Peter, not only do we see that Peter is an example of being a bondservant and apostle, that's an example. But if we drop a little bit further down in that very same verse, we'll see it again relating to Jesus. To those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's see that, that rule is also in place here where our God uh, to Theu. So here we've got the first substantive separated by Kai and then Soteros as well. So we see it again, our great God and Savior. Now, in this case, you might have a modifier such as our, which is fine. That doesn't interfere with the rule at all. And so you can have a modifier uh, before this. Again, that, that's not an issue. But here we've got a clear example, just like we had the first part of 2 Peter 2.1.1, the latter part of 2 Peter 2.1.1, where Peter is the bondservant and apostle. No problem there. The same rule has to be, if we're going to be consistent, follows that so too is Jesus, also our God and Savior. So this where it becomes, it should be clear that just in following the rules, obviously these people spoke the language, they understood it, and there are rules to it, whether they even understood the rule or not. Obviously the rule was not named the Granville Sharp rule. It's just that he stumbled across this rule. It's been tested and proven to be true. So again, if you've got a substantive, which is a noun, it could be an adjective, participle, anything that is a noun or in the place of a noun or represents a noun. If it's singular, if it's personal, meaning it's not a thing, and if it's not a proper name, if those two substantives are separated by the word chi or and, also these two being in the same gender, well, then it fits the rule. It makes the point 100% of the time. Now, this isn't the only rule also that makes the point that Jesus is God. As a matter of fact, one of the classic examples that we've covered all the time is John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And because you've got these two substantives here, which would be Lagos and Theos, which is Word and God, trying to figure out which one is the noun and which one is the predicate nominative, well, the order dictates this. In this case, that is the subject would be the first noun, in this case would be the word, and then the predicate nominative would be the uh, the following, the second noun, in this case would be God. And what does the predicate nominative do? It describes the category, the class of what the noun is, which is the word. The word is in what category, what class? It is God. So there's plenty of rules that we can use to cite, or there are enough rules, I should say, that we can use to cite to determine that Jesus is God, but just the plain reading of the text as well. Because remember, there is one Lord, and the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy that the Lord is God. Moses meets the Lord. He's called the angel of the Lord, the Lord and God, and he's also called I Am. And Jesus says that unless you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. And then if you do not confess that Jesus is the Lord, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. So it's pretty clear. Again, this is not to try to convince a Unitarian, someone who doesn't want to hold to this not for them. This is for you guys who understand the truth, who have had your hearts changed and you are growing in the grace and knowledge. Just further proof, further validation that Jesus is Lord. Amen.